Today I had the honor to meet Kevin Lutfi and his amazing Tesla Goblin that he's built here. There was teams of engineers that worked at different directions on this vehicle, including on the screen here, the University of Arizona School of Engineering. They had a team of six engineers here that it was a two semester project and they were able to put the car together by the end of it. A lot of different pieces coming together and just a fantastic product. Okay, well today we are interviewing Kevin. All right. And uh, his toy here, the, the Tesla Goblin. And uh, he started telling me the history, so I'm gonna make him tell it again for the camera. All right, so uh, we, we built this Goblin as a test vehicle for an EV conversion. And we were looking at what, uh, you know, we definitely were thinking of a Tesla uh, Model S drive motor. And then we also were looking at the Chevy Volt batteries. We got the inspiration from other YouTubers. There was this Tes Tesla Honda, which was a uh, uh, Honda Civic with pretty much the same exact motor and, uh, sorry, batteries and drive motor. Uh, there was also a guy named Sasha who built a Lotus uh, that he, he used the same configuration. And uh, there was a third one, which was a uh, dune buggy that was in Arizona, which they also used the same uh, motor. They used different batteries. But basically when you do, so, so we were looking, we, we knew what uh, drivetrain components we wanted to use. The next step was, well, what, what vehicle to use? And we happened to see a YouTube video by the Goon Squad where they were using this, uh, the Goblin, right? And uh, yeah, we need to keep that. <laughs> okay. Look at that section. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we looked at, uh, you know, we, we sponsored a senior design project to do this. And uh, by doing so, we had limited time that we could do the conversion, right? And we really wanted to make a running vehicle in that time frame. So by, you know, looking well, what it would take to put this in a car versus what could we do with an open frame vehicle like this, we decided to go the route of the Goblin. And we contacted uh, uh, Lonnie uh, about this, and they were very receptive to actually packaging this for us, right? Now, so this is still a fairly long term, like this is over a year in build. Or yeah, it took us, uh, you know, once we, I would say it took us maybe six months once we started really from okay. start to finish, right? I mean, okay. we did we did have, we bought, the, we bought this first, and we bought the batteries first. So in our lab, we had those components and we spent time on a test bench and there's some on the Instagram where we were testing, making sure it worked. And we were, a lot of this is just learning how to communicate with these systems, right? It's software. Yep. And so even though there's a lot of hardware here, it really was, how do you talk to the drive motor? How do you talk to the, to the, um, to the batteries themselves? And one item that we were very concerned with and we didn't know much about was what's called pre-charging. So really, when you engage a battery to a motor like this, there's high capacity, there's a big inrush of current coming into the motor and you could fuse contactors and you could do things oh, okay. bad. So you need to use resistors that kind of slowly build that current up for oh. the motor itself. So that's what we really had to learn and that's what this control box does. It has a bunch of uh, what are called pre-charge uh, resistors and you could see some of them on the left side oh, of yeah, the box. Oh yeah, big white one? No, that's the fuse, that's but to fuse. the left of it, mounted on the on the wall. Okay, yeah. let me try and, yeah. I can't run the camera that way. Right. <laughs> to so, the left of it on the wall. Yeah, right there. So oh, you I see the two, see the, the blue there. leads there. Yeah. yeah. So we, we have two of those. One is on the uh, on the uh, charger circuit, and the other one is on the motor circuit itself. And what it essentially does is it it allows that current not to ramp up too high. Okay. So that was our big fear of testing. It was to have that not work well, right? Now you see a lot of videos. Another a strong inspiration was Damien McGuire, who's got a channel where he's reverse engineered, you know, all kinds of controllers I've for this. I've seen lots of his yeah. videos. Right, so yeah. it, it, that came to where uh, we were looking then, okay, we know we want the Tesla drive unit, but the question is what's the controller that we're right. gonna use to talk to it? Damien's solution is a board that you can build on your own or you could buy it from him fully built, but then you need to talk to it via the CAN bus to engage things like drive, neutral, and reverse, okay? Another company is called 057 Technologies, which is a guy named Jason Hughes, which is much simpler, where you use 12 volt signals on drive, neutral, and reverse, and you'll see them later on. I'll show you how that, you know, we have push buttons that send that signal to the controller, and the controller then interprets that and makes, uh, makes uh, uh, appropriate change, right? Okay. So it was easier, that was easier. The third was, uh, 
a company in Switzerland which had a board that we could have bought and uh, Sasha who built that Lotus used that that system but it was rather difficult to uh, contact them and I guess the fourth is a company in uh, Missouri called EVTV which make, made a Tesla controller etc. Okay. When we looked at the whole balance of it, time versus cost and ease of use, this one was hands down the the most uh, most instant turnkey type solution. This 057 technology, yep. and you can see it in the kick panel. You see the blue, the blue yeah. controller. That is the yeah okay yeah that's our uh, that's their technology. Yeah, and that's that little board. Yeah. They gave you the blue controller, right. The motor and the gas pedal. Is it correct? Or right, right. Is exactly. There anything else with the 057 technology? Uh, that's it. That's and it. in the okay. wiring harness, right? So the wiring oh, harness okay, itself. between the two. Yeah. Sure. So the wiring harness uh, goes from that to uh, uh, directly to the drive controller. So the connectors that you see plugged in here, these are part of the 057 wiring harness right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, it's there. And I think there's one more connection to the motor. And uh, also a pigtail for the connections to the 12 volt input for the drive neutral reverse. So these are all... That, that was yeah. the push buttons you were talking yeah. about earlier? Yeah, Let's take a look at yeah. those. They're all right here on the steering wheel. Right now it's just temporary label. We're probably gonna silk screen that. Oh, you're talking down here? Right. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. Reverse yeah. neutral drive. So when you hit those, it sends the signal to the that blue box to engage that configuration. Uh, the next is the... You could turn what's called regen and creep on and off. So I don't know, an, an EV uh, regen is when you let off the the brake, it'll it'll charge the the battery, right. and you'll feel the car. You you can actually drive it with one pedal, if you really want to. If you're not going so fast, you you don't have to use the brakes because it'll stop itself. So that's what regen means. Creep is this feeling like in an automatic transmission where the car will move forward. If you, you know, the brake. yeah. Okay. So you can have that on or off. Typically, EV people don't have creep on. Right. You leave it off, and you just get used to that driving style of an EV rather than wanting you know like your normal car but they put it in there so that you can it's not such a big transition for somebody going from gas to electric but once you have it you realize that you're gonna you're gonna leave those on right so those are all inputs to the 057 those okay. those switch settings right yeah and uh, you got a horn okay yeah that's just a standard goblin one and you got a right. couple others that are unlabeled yeah they're not used yet but okay. you know we were gonna uh, incorporate those sure right okay. so then the other 057 related item is that it controls your brake lights. So when a car, uh, when you're, when you're regenning, you're braking. You're braking. Yeah. So it has a threshold I think built into it where if it's regenning over a certain kilowatts, it's going to light the brakes. Okay. Right. Which is saying that you're braking. So that's that's an important thing that the 057 is doing. The other is a reverse light. So when you're in reverse it'll light the reverse oh, okay. lights. But you don't light them directly from the 057. You go through a relay okay. so that you don't pull too much power. Sure. LEDs, you might be able to light them directly from it, but it's still, just yeah, use a relay for safer. all that stuff. So that's what it's controlling. So it kind of, that's the, the, the core aspects of how easy that 057 is to integrate, and it controls this Tesla motor. So really the inputs it needs to drive the motor is being hooked up to a battery, right? Okay. So that's the rest of the system is the battery itself, right? So this. Now, yeah. Did 057 require a certain voltage of battery, or how do you? Because you the, you take the, okay. these out of different yeah. vehicles. Yeah. The Tesla. <laughs> the Tesla requires this drive unit requires voltages like a like of a Tesla, which is like 340 volts, let's say, up to 410 volts. Okay. So that's what you need, right? So then okay. you start looking. Well, what kind of battery has that voltage, yet could be packaged into something like this? Right. Of course, you can you know have a model 3 you could take the model 3 pack and put it in that's the right voltage but it's right. the full length of the car how are yeah. you going to so get big, those brick and you need all those batteries in series to get that voltage oh, so you you can't you, steal you, one, pack you, can't steal one. you ha yeah. you could steal one pack but you have to figure out how to get that pack in here right so is one pack is cuz that has four packs so would one pack be a quarter of the voltage you need maybe i don't i haven't looked into yeah. this one very much but i i know I, when we looked at like let's say a model s you yep. need such a size to do it you have a whole pack worth of batteries to get that voltage so really we started saying well what is the uh, most economical pack that still would drive the voltage and it came out to be the Chevy Volt I mean this is the Gen 1 Chevy Volt battery is really an ideal swap conversion battery the only drawback of it is it doesn't have very good capacity this is 16 uh, kilowatt hour right. 
So, I mean, that car is 75 kilowatt hours. So it means that you can't go as far, but uh, the car is light, right? Yeah. So, so you're going to get some efficiency yeah. gains there. They typically say the rating on a car is how many watt hours do you get per mile driven, okay. right? So the Tesla uh, Model 3 uh, long range with the, uh, sorry, yeah, long range battery with the just rear drive, that was the first Tesla Model 3s they made, are some of the most efficient EVs. They're around 230 watt hour per mile. Okay. Uh, now this Model 3 Performance Edition, I'm getting 330. It's much worse, right? Okay. Maybe it's the way I drive it. Maybe it's uh, sure. my friend gets around 303 or something. So it depends. But the figure of merit that people say is take the weight divided by 10. So okay. if it's a 1600 pound car divided by 10, this car should be getting around 160 watt hour per mile. The lower the number, the better. It means you'll go right. further miles per right. per kilowatt hour of capacity. Sure. So, I mean, that's that's. So we think that maybe this car is uh, in a volt. It's about 30 mile range. So I'm thinking this is about 80 mile range fully charged, okay. something like that. But we've never driven it. This car hasn't been driven very right. much, other than when we built it. Um, the um, and we'll start driving it more and more. But we. We got busy, so we didn't. <laughs> we, <laughs> haven't we didn't. We much. haven't played with it much, <laughs> but that's why we picked this battery. So you look at the battery. So one is voltage that we talked about. Two is the capacity. It's sufficient enough capacity for this application to be, to be good, right? We're not going to just go down the street and it's going to die. Right. It, it can go quite a bit of distance. The third is uh, volumetric efficiency. You know, how does it package? And it's not the smallest battery, but it's not terrible, right? right? The, 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 the other benefits is Chevy really engineered this to be a, a very long life battery. They didn't want this to be go on the market and you hear uh, failures of the battery, like black eye for them, right? Okay. So, okay. so the pack is overbuilt. You know, you could, the EPA did a study, there was people on the YouTube who, who, who you know, talked about that and you could look at the study and basically you could pull a lot of current from this pack, even though the Volt didn't do that. They never pulled that range in a volt. They really underutilize this battery in a volt. Now, but for this application, the we, volt had this battery too. Yeah, and the, you got this out of a volt. V yeah. Volt V, oh. like in Victor. Oh, I thought you it's got from, this out of a It's volt. from it's from it's from the it's from the hybrid car, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. So when I say thirty miles, that's in the hybrid, you know, running pure EV. Okay. Right. So, uh, but they never use the battery. Let's say it's a sixteen kilowatt hour battery. I believe they used only twelve to fourteen kilowatt hours. So they never fully discharged it, they never fully charged it, so they, they did that to keep the battery very reliable, right? right? So that's why we, you know, we felt comfortable that we could use this battery. We could probably take it above its intended range, okay? Yeah. So, push so, it a little harder yeah. than what they did. So we looked at other batteries. We looked at, I think there's Kia electric cars. There's certain batteries that are out there that would give us the voltage we need and would also have the packaging that we could use and also would have, uh, uh, similar yeah, packaging, uh, similar size, but they're not water-cooled. So the other benefit is this uh, is a water-cooled yes, battery, I right? I noticed that. So, so it's really, you know, in Arizona, it's an important thing, right? Sure. So Nissan Leaf wasn't a water-cooled battery when it started, and they actually had a lot of problems here in Arizona. It still isn't. Yeah, I, I, I haven't, haven't really yeah, kept have up on it. Yeah, they, they're do? still doing the older technology, which right. wears your batteries out quicker. Right. <laughs> So the water cooling was a, was another a plus of this battery pack. And you'll see that they're using this pack a lot and people who are doing home solar, they'll yep. take the pack and they'll split it. So you can split this pack and get a 48 volt brick. Okay. And so people are doing that and they're using it for, for home type, uh, you know, uh, solar plus energy backup type applications. Other people are using it for uh, uh, electric golf carts. Right. So in here, I see you've got a bank there and a bank there. Is there another right. bank? Yeah, there's down another below? bank below. Right. Below. So you got three bank banks, and I'm assuming nothing in the nose. Yeah, nothing in the nose because okay. it just wouldn't fit. Wouldn't, right. There yeah. was no no pack that would fit up there. It would be nice to keep the weight up there, but uh, yeah. it wouldn't fit. I think Lonnie weighted on his scales. I think it's 68 percent in the rear weight. Okay. Right. Which the standard one is probably 64 some yeah. somewhere in the 60s it's not yeah. so it's not a terrible difference i think the car in total weighed 1600 pounds like I, he gave me pictures of the scales when he weighed it and yep. that's without driver so uh, and that's without us putting things in it right so uh, right. what 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 they did for us which was really helpful was they figured out how to package these packs so i think when you went and you visited him you saw that he 
installed these or he had these installed 